thing about Kamala is she is dirty and she has been dirty uh, from the beginning. And that's why I just want to play this one clip and then I'll get into more detail about this. Uh, this is something they dug up. About what she said about young people is cut 14. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. And then she, that's what she said. And then she was asked later during the primaries, should they be given the vote, these stupid people? It was cut two. Given that policies passed now will affect the younger generation for years to come, do you believe that Americans should have the right to vote at age 16? I'm really interested in having that conversation. I have to tell you that. Um, I think that there is no question that um, if we are looking at what is going on in our country, we are putting more responsibilities on people at a younger age. And um, the larger number of people that we can involve in the electoral process, um, I think the more robust it would be. <laughs> so they're stupid and we want them voting. Why would that be, do you think? Why would that be? Well, it's because her story is a story of corruption. That is what it is from the very, very beginning. I mean, you know, she she got into, you know, you don't, they, they're going to attack you for being sexist no matter what, but she slept her way into politics. There's just no question about it. Uh, you know, uh, Willie Brown was the mayor of San Francisco. He was an assemblyman in San Francisco. He was also a fixer in San Francisco, and he was a famous uh, gad about what I don't know what you call him. He was a famous womanizer. He was a womanizer. And uh, he was married, but he was always, always had a girl on his arm. And one of those girls was Kamala Harris. And he was uh, 60. Uh, she was in her 20s. And he helped her get uh, elected DA, DA in, in San Francisco. Uh, while this was going on, you know, sometimes he would show up at parties, Willie Brown, with his wife on one arm, <laughs> his girlfriend on another arm, one of them, Kamala Harris. And then, and then when she became DA and they said, well, aren't you connected to this major fixer? She just basically threw him overboard. She said, his career is over. I will be alive and kicking for the next 40 years. I don't owe him a thing. <laughs> so, so she's she's a tough a tough character. He was the only DA. This is from Peter Schweitzer, uh, Profiles in Corruption: Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite. This is his book. Uh, she was the only D DA in the top fifty metropolitan cities who did not bring charges against Catholic clergy for sexual abuse. I mean, this was a major, major scandal. It was going on everywhere. It was going on all over the country. And in every major city, they were bringing charges against these people, but not Kamala Harris. I mean, this is this is really her history. And it goes on. And I'll keep talking about it because this is the way I think Trump should go. You know, they've come after Trump with everything. And seriously, they have nothing. They have absolutely nothing on them. The Russian thing was a hoax. The Ukraine thing was a nothing burger. Everything they've brought against him has turned out to be untrue, you know, and, the, and it's, it's really interesting about him because you, you know how I feel about Trump. I'm, I'm not sure I would, uh, you know, uh, trust him with a lot of business deals, but apparently, apparently he plays by the rules. He's always played by the rules. He's never gone around a judge. He's never in as a president. He's never gone around a judge. He's never uh, violated the Constitution. They don't really have anything on him. And God knows they've tried, whereas Kamala Harris is openly, openly dirty. And that's the tack I think Trump should take. He should pile up the evidence and really bring it to her because I think he can beat them uh, with that since she is, of course, the, uh, going to be the president if they get elected. So this, this goes on. The stuff about her corruption goes on. Uh, she was California attorney general. And this is kind of a complicated story. I don't want to get too much into the deep weeds, but there were uh, a, a chain of hospitals, six hospitals that were insolvent that had been run by the Catholic Daughters of Charity uh, and a new healthcare place wanted to come in and buy them up and keep these uh, hospitals open uh, to serve California. It was Prime Healthcare Services, it was called. And they made an $840 million bid for these six hospitals. But the problem was that Prime Healthcare... Uh, was the, it was the only bidder that agreed to assume the hospital's million, $300 million liability. I don't want to get too much into this, but the point is they, they were the only ones who were going to do it, but they wouldn't agree 
with the Service Employees International Union, United Healthcare Worker, we- Workers West, they wouldn't agree to let them come in with a free hand and unionize. So the union went to Kamala Harris and she pulled all this dirty stuff. She put all these poison pills into the deal. They, she wanted to require 24 hour nursing, surgery, anesthesia, laboratory, stuff that hospitals couldn't afford. And she exploded this deal so that California lost the hospitals in service to her friends, the unions, right? And, and was she getting money for this? Was she getting, you know, obviously, obviously that this is, this is the thing that's happening. The thing that was, this is the way her kind of politics works. It works by donations. As proof of this, take a look at another story. And this story has always really, uh, I've always found the story particularly upsetting. When she was attorney general, remember this guy, uh, David Delighton, I think his name is. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he went in and he got secretly recorded videos of Planned Parenthood officials uh, discussing how to sell body parts, basically. And he put this out. And so instead of instead of investigating Planned Parenthood, uh, she went after the guy. She went after the guy who got the videos. Is it just ama- it's an amazing, amazing story? I, I did one of my funniest videos. You can still find it. Uh, it was so it was so raw that they actually wouldn't put the name of the Daily Wire on it because it was just so raw about what these Planned Parenthood people were doing. Uh, go and see if you can find it because it really is funny. But. But Kamala Harris had close ties to Planned Parenthood organizations. Uh, she had received Operation Rescue, a, a pro-life organization, has gotten documents that showed that she received over $81,000 uh, into her attorney general campaign coffers. And so instead of investigating uh, Planned Parenthood selling body parts, she went after Delighton. She went after Delighton. Here he is on Fox talking about this is cut six. While she was running for U.S. Senate, while Planned Parenthood in California was contributing to her political campaign, did she recuse herself from the Planned Parenthood investigation? No, she didn't. She consciously and willfully involved herself directly and personally in the Planned Parenthood case. She had an in-person meeting with six Planned Parenthood executives from California in Los Angeles two weeks before the raid on my apartment. Then... He talks about the way she came after him as cut seven. Kamala Harris, in my experience, I've been on the receiving end of her abuse of power and her pattern of targeting Americans who have viewpoints that disagree with her own, targeting them and using her powers of office to try and punish them for viewpoints that disagree with hers. If you were an animal rights activist, you could do undercover video to expose how animals were being treated. And Kamala Harris praised those activists and used that video for her agenda as attorney general, but if you were an undercover journalist investigating Planned Parenthood and investigating the abortion industry trafficking baby body parts, then Kamala Harris wanted to silence you, wanted to intimidate you, and wanted to make sure that your message was punished and didn't get out there to the public. So she she sleeps away into office. She doesn't prosecute uh, corrupt priests. She doesn't co- prosecute police officers either who have stepped over the line. Uh, she goes after, uh, she scotches a deal that would keep hospitals around for a union to serve a union. And then she goes after a, a journalist, essentially, who gets the dirt on Planned Parenthood because she's getting $81,000 in donations uh, from Planned Parenthood. This is a dirty bird, as we used to say. This is a really uh, soiled person. And you can talk about, oh, she's a woman and oh, she's this color or that color. But you can't defend against corruption. Corruption is the worst thing in politics because it trumps uh, it trumps policy. You know, policy can't do what policy is supposed to do if the organization that's running it is corrupt. If the politicians are corrupt, it doesn't matter what policies you have. That was the thing. That's how Giuliani transformed New York. Uh, and Mayor Koch before him helped transform New York, not as much as Giuliani, but they did it because they were both incorruptible. Uh, Koch was more of a liberal, though he became more conservative over time. Giuliani was a conservative, but they were both incorruptible. And that's a big deal. This is a corrupt person. 